Today I'm joined by Asher, a computational chemist at Silo, and Jean, a computational medicinal chemist at Silo. So Silo is an Australian company developing drugs inspired by psychedelics. So today we have here this GPCR, it's a 5-HT2A receptor, and this structure was originally bound to LSD. However, Asher carried out a high throughput virtual screening and he's going to explain to us everything about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the introduction, Daniel. Um, the whole idea of this project, I kind of want to talk about a little bit of background. Most psychedelics come in three classes. They come in a tryptamine. Um, they can be like a ergotamine or they can be an N-bomb-like compound. And these are known compounds in psychedelics. But the whole idea of this project was to look for new scaffolds that bind to serotonin 2A. Often, often not in this field, a lot of people look for drugs that are easier to figure out if they have activity at the receptor. So they might take a silicin molecule and put a foreign at the five, six, seven position on the tryptamine and call that a new psychedelic. But what we're interested in, in um, the company is trying to look at brand new scaffolds that have never before been seen that bind to serotonin 2A. So the basic premise of how this worked was I went to what's called the Zinc database, which is a drug database um, led by Brian Choichet and the Irwin Lab at the University of uh, San Francisco. And you can use these large databases to select and screen for a large amount of ligands. The whole idea behind this high throughput screening is you can dock maybe, let's say, a million, two million, five million compounds to one receptor uh, target site. But in this case, uh, I actually looked at 100 million compounds and screens them at the receptor target, which is the 5-HT2A in question. And when you do a screen like this, you get lots of ligands that end up binding and looking pretty good. We ended up screening out of, I think right now where we're at is we screened 100 million and we ended up with 1,200 compounds. So Daniel, if you just go to tranches, Right. Yeah. Just click on tranches here and 3D. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. And 3D. And then uh, reactivity standard is okay. Um, actually, go to, go to uh, anodyne. anodyne. That's usually yeah. anodyne is usually what I use. Um, anything else besides like anodyne? Um, anodyne basically means things that aren't really reactive, like no micro acceptors, no thiols. Purchasability, weight is okay, I put. Uh, pH reference is fine. Uh, uh, reference in mid means like physiological pH, which is around 7, 7.4. And then charge, this is an important one. You got to think about this. So compounds that are active at the serotonin 2A receptor form a salt bridge with a spartic acid 155, which you need a positively charged amine to do this or a positive one charge. So that's an important selection criteria. I suppose you could look at positive two and kind of see what happens, but let's just go with positive one for now. That was my selection criteria. Um, okay. Yeah, just positive one. So it's got, and then you, yep. I guess you can go to lead, go to lead alike for that one. This is kind of a general idea for how you develop a search criteria on Zinc database. So I would have downloaded all of these compounds, which in my my case was 100 million, and then um, used high throughput virtual ligand screening. And basically, if we kind of consider the binding site, the binding site's right here, right, the center binding site. So I would have told I would have told my program to take all 100 million ligands and dock them to this very particular binding site on the 5-HT uh, two-way receptor, and you know we keep we would have kept compounds that had relatively good glide scores, and when I say relatively good, that would be something like better than psilocin or LSD, which are compounds that already have activity at the receptor uh, site. That's awesome. Yeah, let's show the surface rendering here. We can scale it yeah. up. Yeah. Can inside you? There's one thing I want. The there's always one. The there's bucket, always. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. There's always one thing yeah. I like to uh, talk. There's always something I like to show when we talk about um, these binding sites is how do these drugs get into the binding site? So if you look, there was a little, when we were kind of outside the receptor before, there's a little cavity in the extracellular space of the receptor. Yeah, so you kind of right. see the hole right there. Yeah. 
I always like to mention this, how how do drugs get in? Well, there's there's a hole in the it's extracellular here, right? space. Yeah. Of their, they, yeah, they they snake their way in, as I kind of call it, you know, unscientifically. <laughs> I'll say they, yeah. they kind of sneak their way into the binding site and get inside Amazing, the, yeah. the binding site of the uh, pocket of the receptor. And this I is like great. We now we're uh, now we're inside the all three of us are inside this orthosteric binding site of five HG two A. Yeah. Hey Daniel, <laughs> far away, so far I'm away. I'm here next to this fluorine atom. Yeah. <laughs> next to the fluorine yeah. atom. <laughs> yep. It is. And I guess what we noticed was that uh, with this particular this particular compounds that I found, there were some interactions we noticed with um, the lid mechanism, the leucine two twenty eight two twenty nine lid, which oh, is a yes. really let's show that. Yes, correct. Yeah, right here on the lid, right. Yeah, it's an important role. I'm going to hide the surface for now, so we can see what you're talking about. Oh, you're talking about oh, this oh, leucine residue over here. Right? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, both leucine two twenty eight, both both amino acids two twenty eight and two twenty nine are leucines, um, and they both are part of extracellular loop number two, which is this this uh, this loop right here, extracellular loop number two. And in a lot of lysergamides like LSD, these play a role is that they sort of they they sort of have hydrophobic interaction. Also, in this case, a hydrogen bond with part of the molecule, and it kind of locks the drug in there like a molecular lid, which is one of the reasons why LSD in particular has a particularly long, um, long trip, we'll say it stays inside the receptor for a much longer time than a compound right. like psilocin, which doesn't really interact with the lid. And I think a lot of people, you know, I think, I think quite a few people in the psychedelic space now are trying to actually show like, can we reduce interaction with the lid so we can have a shorter psychedelic trip? I don't, yeah. I don't know that it's the right thing to do in terms of like the therapeutic outcomes, but it's what I've noticed a lot of people are trying to do to cause shorter trips um, on and these compounds. Um, mutagen mutagenic studies as well, where they mutated that um, amino acid, and it did, it did show that um, the residence time, the, the time that LSD is found in the pocket was reduced. Cool. So, yeah, definitely interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so we have other yeah. compounds, by the way, that you also came up with, uh, right, Ash? We're going to display them here in yeah, a we second. Can we can display a few. Yeah, we have this here with a thiol group, these uh, indol groups over here, uh, and this th this one's an indol group, right? Not, not this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I thought... Here. I thought this was interesting because, you know, when we ran the virtual screen, it actually picked up a compound that, you know, has an indole, which, you know, uh, both LSD and psilocin and serotonin all have indole. So, so I, I was I was happy to see that it picked up a compound that actually had an indole, indole ring in it. That was interesting. And then the other ones that we um, that I chose to show were just things that I thought were interesting. Like, for example, the one, yeah, that one. Yeah, and these are all the two hits that you got. Right? Yeah. Yep. And um, actually, we did a docking experiment in Nanum, and so we're going to show just that, right? Yep. Because, uh, yeah, we have it here right now in the orthostatic pocket. In, in orange is uh, one of the dockings you did, and with one of your good results, I believe, but then yep. the pink one is the docking we this carried out sulfur. right here in yeah. Nanum. Yep. And it docked right very well in the orthostatic pocket with uh, Autodoc Vina. Well, actually, yep. Autodoc Mina, which is a kind of a faster version of Vina. We have a docking score here of minus 8.3, which is not bad. No. And yeah, it looks just very comfortable there in the pocket, right? That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, no, I I definitely think so. I uh, I think yeah, I thought yeah, like I said before, I thought it was an interesting comp on the show because I had the sulfur. Yeah, I mean it's it's nice to see the poses because all like in a project like ours, we're not so much concerned with like what pose would be exactly correct. The whole reason of high through virtual screens is, is to narrow down a very massive list of drugs that are a likely to bind and b not likely to to bind. Which in case we kind of throw away the compounds that aren't likely to bind. And those would be the ones with like anything under like negative eight. I kind of threw away anything more negative than negative eight. We kind of kept um, right. kind of the search criteria. 
Awesome. So at some point, I guess you probably move some of these compounds to the uh, si synthesis, right? To some laboratory. So you can carry yeah, Jin, out some... Jin, why don't you talk about this part? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So re really our next step um, is um, we, we were ended up with 1,200 molecules, which, you know, going from 100 million to 1,200 is, is really, really efficient and very powerful and shows um, really shows what docking can really do. But um, 1,200 molecules is still a lot to explore um, experimentally. So we, um, we, 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 we have an, a, um, a virtual screening platform that we call InSilico. And that, and that platform really aims to further um, fi uh, filter at molecules based on some additional parameters and not just simple parameters like drug likeness, but things like 2B activity, possible 2B activity, and also distinguishing okay. whether these molecules could be agonists or antagonists, things like that. So um, we, we, we really want to uh, focus our attempts uh, at synthesis and um, and experimentally validating molecules that have the best chance of really clinical success. So just not just two A binding. I mean, it's 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 quite a bit of. I always when I was talking to Jen, I was saying how it's quite a bit of work to you know even have twelve hundred molecules and try and narrow down the search from even that from a hundred million. So I think it's um like imperative that you probably eventually get it down to under a hundred. Is what I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Well, checking again this view. See how this duct mm. molecule moves over here. Yeah, it's kind of it's probably too big this right now. I think we had good footage uh, inside the pocket before anyway. Mm. Um, nice. Yeah, so anything else uh, you guys want to discuss about this project? May do you need to show all the other molecules at all? Or I guess we're done with these. We already discussed them. Yeah, right? for now we discussed them. Yeah, I think we're ah, good. Yeah, I know what, what we can show probably is this. So... Oh, is that kind of the picture? It could be quite yeah. a crappy picture, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, do you, what yeah. do you do here? You have like a million compounds bound in the pocket here and, and like a 20 million interactions <laughs> at least, right? <laughs> the, the idea that I want to show is I want to drag this in VR. I really want to show the fact that like if you take the... I think I, in this picture, actually, I took about 120 of the highest, uh, the best glide score ligands, and I superimpose them in the binding site because I want to show what interactions, uh, what interactions are important for making a high uh, 2A agonist in terms of glide score. And basically, there are regions in this picture that do depict some importance. And one of those in the bottom, this Daniel, pointers are okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, one of them in the bottom is this hydrogen bond right here in yellow with serine 242. One of them, of course, in magenta is the salt bridge yeah. with the spartic acid 135. There is a cation pi stack here as well as a pi pi stack in blue. The cation one is in green. Anything with the yellow is a hydrogen bond. One of these is ASN 343. I think it might... Mm, I'm actually not sure. Maybe we'll cut that out too. But I know there's an ASN 343 interaction that's kind of uh, important. But um, in in a sense, what this is called is pharmacophore modeling, right? You look at what what types of interactions within the orthosteric binding pocket could produce a high affinity ligand, and looking at hydrogen bonds, pi stacks, these types of interactions. But yeah, yeah, yeah it, it ended up kind of being a funny picture, I think, with uh, a little bit too much going on. I'd say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for joining today. Uh, it was very interesting to learn more about this project on high throughput virtual screening and a psychedelic inspired uh, new potential drugs that you guys are developing. And hopefully we can treat some conditions, right? I'm probably, uh, this is geared towards uh, depression and things like that, I could yeah. imagine, right? I'm super excited to validate some of these, get these compounds into a lab and actually see if they act as serotonin 2A agonists and IE psychedelics, because it would kind of validate all the in silico work that uh, was done with this method. And in the future, we can use a lot more in silico methods that will save so much time in terms of, you know, drug development. It's not like, it's not like shooting a, like a, you know, it's not like shooting a needle on a haystack. You're looking at more of a precise way of doing this versus 
like, I'm just going to put these random atoms on this active compounds and uh, hope for the best. So I'm, I'm, ex I'm super excited to see like, what new psychedelics come out of this. Oh, absolutely. And then, you know, with tools like Nanom, this makes research also much easier. You can visualize in three dimensions much better than any other platform. And then you, Asher, you are in Canada. Gene is in Australia. I am in New York City, and we are in this virtual room interacting together in real time. That's very powerful too. So it helps advance science too, right? It's amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And um, thank you everybody for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>